This beautiful country on the Adriatic coast has been a popular tourist destination, especially in the past couple of decades, for a couple different reasons. But one of the main reasons is that it has a lot of the features that Italy and Greece have, the beautiful clear water, the coastline, all of the different amazing architecture. The one difference between this and Italy and Greece is the price tag. Everything in Croatia is a lot more affordable, and that's why tourists have started to flock here more than Italy and Greece. Now, speaking of tourists, we are in the city of Dubrovnik, which has become one of the hot spots of tourism in all of Europe. And there's only one reason for it, Game of Thrones. If you're a Game of Thrones fan, you're gonna love this video. We're gonna be showing you actual locations where they filmed a lot of the episodes. Everything from season two all the way over to season eight. Season eight was a little unfortunate, but they did film it here. We're gonna try to show you all of the Game of Thrones locations in and around the Old Town. Even if you're not a Game of Thrones fan, there's a lot to see here in Dubrovnik. It's a beautiful city. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It was originally built as a fortress, so the entire Old Town of the city is surrounded by a wall. And we will also be showing you an entire walk around the old city wall at the end of the video. Stay tuned for that. We're actually on the location of Blackwater Bay. This is without a doubt one of the more iconic filming locations because they didn't use a whole lot of CGI. A lot of what you're gonna see in the show is exactly what's right behind me. So I would definitely start the tour here, especially since it's right outside the old town. Perfect place to start. This is really amazing how all of these locations, you can come right up to them. It's pretty much all public area. And when they filmed, they actually let people just watch. There were a lot of people already in season two and three that were catching on to how awesome Game of Thrones was, and they would just watch them film right here. We're now standing on the pier where Jon Snow said his goodbyes in the final season. Now in the show, you'll likely see a large merchant ship leaving this bay. Today, it's only kayaks. It's also a very notable scene earlier in the series when Sansa is talking to Shay. I believe she says something like, as they're watching the ship go away, the captain grows tired of risking his life just so that the lords and ladies of King's Landing can get drunk on better wine than they deserve. Another lesser known scene is just right behind me, where Cersei was actually having the illegitimate sons of Robert Baratheon drowned in that little pond over there. Not the happiest of things, but it's because they had more of a claim to the throne than Joffrey did. We want to give a quick shout out to Axis Dubrovnik, who hooked us up with a last minute walking tour of the Game of Thrones filming locations with our new friend Davosh, who actually played a small role in season 5 of the show. One of the most prominent filming locations is the Levergenac Fortress. This fortress requires a bit of a hike, but it is well worth the visit for a few reasons. The main courtyard is very recognizable as the setting of Cersei's conversation with Littlefinger in season 2, where she proclaims the famous line, power is power. The top level of the fortress also provides an incredible vantage point of the Adriatic Sea and the majestic old town of Dubrovnik, which of course was the setting for the city of King's Landing in the show. We have officially entered the Old Town through the Pila Gate. Now it looks like Pile Gate, and when we were looking it up, most people on YouTube were calling it the Pile Gate. You were all wrong. It's not Pile Gate, it's called the Pila Gate. I'm standing on almost the exact location where King Joffrey got a piece of feces thrown at his face, 
Whoever did that, shout out, because we all hate King Joffrey. One thing we noticed right away is in the show, it looks like a very large set, but in actuality, it's not that big. They just use an ultra wide lens to make it look big, but they made the most out of the space they had. They actually packed hundreds of extras and all of the extras are paid around 45 euros a day. That's a long day of filming for just 45 euros a day. A lot of people just wanted to be part of the spectacle that is Game of Thrones. Pila Gate is the main passage for almost everyone entering the Old Town. It's only been closed three times in history. Once when the French was invading, once when the Serbs were invading, and once when Game of Thrones was invading. They closed it off for filming, which was a big deal, and a lot of people were upset, especially locals. And even though it is late afternoon, we are still passing tour group after tour group, and they're all here for Game of Thrones. We learned that every third tourist here is here because of Game of Thrones. I think that's an old statistic. I think after the meteoric rise of the show in the last couple seasons, it's gotta be almost every tourist that comes here. This is the Bell Tower. If you remember in season eight, when Daenerys, out of nowhere, becomes a villain and just torches the entire city of King's Landing, that bell is going off as a surrender. As soon as she heard it, she considered, am I gonna let them surrender? No, she didn't. When that bell is ringing, not good news for the people of King's Landing. Mother of Dragons, we surrender! The next filming location on the list is Rector's Palace. This is a few different times in the show that this is a filming location. Probably the most recognizable is when Arya Stark is walking through the wreckage, that chilling scene right after King's Landing is just completely set ablaze. She walks into a white horse. It's right in front of these pillars. You can look back at the scene. It's instantly recognizable. The inside of the palace is now a museum and you can actually go in there. That's when Daenerys is talking to the spice trader. It's supposed to be set in the city of Karth. This is when she's asking for ships to help her cross the sea. There's actually a statue in there where if you walk right past it, it was in the show. They didn't didn't try to CGI it out or anything, and it still stands right there inside Rector's Palace. We are now at the Jesuit Steps. Any guesses on the scene that was filmed here? It probably won't take you very long because it's one of the more iconic scenes in the series. Shame. 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 This is where Cersei Lannister's walk of shame began, right at the top of these steps. Now the reason that probably sticks out in most people's memory is because Cersei Lannister was naked in the scene walking down the steps. But believe it or not, that was actually not the actress for Cersei Lannister, it was a body double. This was another scene where they needed to hire hundreds of extras to stand around as Cersei was walking down the steps and towards the Red Keep. The funny thing about that is a lot of the extras they hired were young men, and the biggest thing they told them, they said you can heckle her, you can insult her, you can say basically anything. The one thing you can't do is smile, because this is a very serious scene, one of the worst moments of her life. This is a very pivotal part of the series. You absolutely cannot smile. Well, there's a naked woman walking down the steps and a bunch of young men standing all around. So a lot of them had huge smiles on their faces and it was a big problem for the filming and actually they had to do several different takes because too many people were smiling. Honestly, they should have seen that one coming. And you're probably not gonna have trouble finding this on Google Maps. It's literally called the Walk of Shame filming location on Google Maps. We need gelato, we need something to cool down, so we're just on one of these narrow streets where the sun doesn't touch the ground. It's one of the great things about the old town. There are a couple very recognizable filming locations for Game of Thrones on this very wall. This was originally built as a fortress right on the sea. A lot of people call Dubrovnik the Pearl of the Adriatic, and this entire city wall just encloses it in a medieval fortress style. We're so excited to walk all the way around the perimeter of the city and get the best views we can. 
So during the siege of Dubrovnik in the 90s from the Yugoslav army, there were actually a lot of buildings that were completely destroyed. And what's interesting of being on the city wall, you can see these roofs that are completely different colors than the other ones. It's like this terracotta, um, almost Spanish tile looking top to the roofs. So those are all brand new. The Croatian forces were able to hold off the SFR and it was a Croatian victory here in Dubrovnik. Directly to my right, to your left, is another Game of Thrones filming location. This amazing little terrace that looks right out onto the Adriatic Sea. This is where Tyrion Lannister and Lord Varys were talking strategy as they were looking out. I don't think we could have timed this any better. The sun is hitting all of the buildings. Definitely recommend coming later in the day. Croatia has miles and miles of coastline and Dubrovnik is our first area that we are checking out. It has blown us away. I kind of feel bad for the locals who live in the old town, have strangers, thousands of strangers come to your backyard every day. Another great feature of walking the wall besides the stunning views of the Adriatic, there's also a few cafes that you can stop and just get a water or a tea or a beer or something like that. It's a good way to make sure you're not just rushing through the experience because this is definitely some of the best views you're going to find apart from the cable car here in Dubrovnik. We are only about halfway through the city wall, so if you are coming and planning on doing the entire walk, make sure you have at least an hour and a half to do it. If you're on the fence about doing the wall or not because of the price, I think you definitely should do it. It's incredible up here. The total price for our two tickets was 500 kuna, which comes up to around $66 US, so about $33 a person. It may seem a little pricey, but this is probably the best thing you can do here in Dubrovnik. You get an entire panoramic view of the entire old town. You get to see all of these amazing views over the Adriatic Sea. If you do go to the Lovrienats Fortress, which we were at before, that's a hundred kuna per person and you actually get that discounted off of your city wall ticket. Something to keep in mind if that price tag you're just not sure about it you have to come to the city wall I'm telling you right now just don't miss out on this. There's hardly anyone on the west side of the wall now, and it's about seven o'clock. So maybe the best time to come is after all the people from the cruise ships leave. They do close at 7 p.m., but as long as you get there before, I would recommend getting around 6 or 6.15. They won't kick you out. You can still walk the entire wall. I think it, how, what time is it right now? Yeah, 7 it's 7.30 and no one's coming to arrest us or anything. So definitely don't think that that's the time that you absolutely have to leave. That's just the time that you have to get on the wall before. Okay, so it didn't last long. They're telling us we have to go now. This is absolutely closing time. We're not allowed to be here anymore. But we had to show you the last filming location. Right behind me, this is where Daenerys was walking around at the House of the Undying when she was trying to find her stolen dragons. So if you look back on this scene, there's actually not a whole lot of CGI that they did. It basically looks exactly like what we're looking at right now, except it's in reverse. So let's go to the other side. So I think right about here, right about here, this is where Daenerys, she's looking up like this. She's trying to figure out. Her dragons. She's trying to figure out where the dragons are. They might be right there. This is pretty cool. I mean, you can definitely tell this is the set. Like this is absolutely recognizable. One more look at the Brovnik.
So one little bonus one that we missed as we were kind of being shunted to the exits. If you look right up there, that is the staircase that Jon Snow comes down in the very last episode as he's heading down to the pier. And that right there is everything you need to see Game of Thrones wise in Dubrovnik. There are a couple other things around the coast, really cool beaches that we're gonna be showing you. The cable car, we definitely have to get up there now that we've seen this view. But as far as the Game of Thrones filming locations, that's pretty much all of them that you're gonna see in Dubrovnik. So go ahead and drop in the comments. I don't know if you guys do watch Game of Thrones. What was your favorite season? What was your favorite episode? It's been a while since I've watched it, so being here is maybe you want to watch it again. Also, are you tuning into House of the Dragon, the spinoff? Because we watched the first episode actually pretty good and I'm excited to see where they go from here. At least better than season eight was. Oh, still can't get over that. But yeah, definitely drop in the comments. Favorite episode, favorite season, and are you watching House of the Dragon?